What's happening? What's good, gang? What's good, What's bro? good? Yo, what's up? We got my boy Trey Graphics in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I see you yeah. with the vape on. It's a good yeah, vape. Yeah, You know I had to wear it because I knew I got, uh, I, got, I got a pro in the merch game in the building. Yeah, so I had to yeah. kind of like swag out a little bit, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, I felt that. I felt that. I kind of wanted to, you know, keep it like a little low key or whatever. You know what I mean? I didn't want to like throw too many brands out there, you know. People yeah. dry hating. <laughs> this is actually like my favorite brand from back in the day. Like when I was in, you know, of course, I got me some bathed. I got that. That shit blew it up. <laughs> yeah. Pharrell Williams, Kanye West, and I think uh, there's a cut. The Milo, Milo. Hell brand. Yeah. I don't know some something about yeah. it. Like it's just that style. I just like it. Plus, I, I'm from a military town, so oh, okay. it, when I wore it, that kind of st- stood out. Like you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. pink camouflage, like blue camouflage. It's like what? You know what I mean? Yeah, so, that, that camo cool be busted with anything. Nah, yeah, that camo be busted yeah. with anything. Sure, oh yeah sure. man so first of all welcome to the ones and twos you know this is the ones and twos daily podcast interview whatever you say from dj kane talking to business people artists djs and you know just kind of getting your yeah. perspective on things having a little conversation a little fun so trey where are you from bro bro so originally i'm born in garland and then uh you know i moved all around like pretty much just like east dallas a little bit but uh yeah, really from Garland, really. And then um, I all in my bio, I okay. put Dallas, you know, because, like, that's where I do a lot of my work. A lot of my work is downtown. You know, if anybody in the game mm-hmm. know, like, they be seeing me at 211 a lot. You know what I mean? Like, just, like, in the streets, really just, like, grinding and hustling with these graphics, for real, for real. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. So, Garland, so, uh, like, born and raised, you've lived here most of your life, never, like, moved around to, like, different states or something like that, or... Oh, no, no. But my family, you know, my family is originally from L.A., uh, like Los Alamitos area. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, my, I come from a military family, too, you know. So, like, so my dad, you know, he would move around. But then, like, towards the end when he retired, he moved to Dallas. And then that's when mm-hmm. my mom had me, you know. Okay. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, uh, both my parents are military, so they were all around the world, but they had me right when they retired. So I didn't get the experience that. Right, you know, same I mean, way, same yeah. thing, man. Same you know thing. what I mean? It's like I couldn't really go to because they went to Germany or Spain, all that. I went to Sacramento for a year, and I came back to Wichita Falls, which is my hometown. And where I'm from is none of this. Everybody's got nah, yeah. boots on. Wife beaters, you know, they the swag is very minimal over there, bro. Yeah, it's facts. ridiculous. Like, that was one thing about my, my family is that, like, you know, even though I wasn't traveling all over the country with my, my family for like base to base and stuff, uh, my parents made it a point to like really make me travel. So, you know, I've been like New York, Florida, uh, Miami, LA, all these places, you know, like, and I travel because of sports too. I used to play baseball in high school, so like. I always got a chance to see like different type of like styles, different type of people, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm blessed for that, for real, for real. Yeah, that's what's up. So, man, I see your merch. I met you at a party. You know what I'm saying? My yeah. boy Pablo introduced me to you. Yeah, and shout out Pablo. He, I, I, <laughs> shout out Pablo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I have to say, man, this dude, <laughs> I know I got the little sound effects. I'm in my studio no, that's right fire. now. It's fire. It's <laughs> fire. But it's like I saw the swag. I so say he got the chain. He got the styles. Like this dude, probably an artist, some type of artist. And when you told me you're a graphic person, I'm like, okay, graphic. Then you make merch. You showed me on your phone some of your merch, and I'm just like, all right, this is different. Like I like the yeah. all over print style because yeah. I'm gonna be honest, man. When I see a lot of people do merch, and you know, God bless everybody doing merch. Do your thing. But it's like it don't look like it's really like art. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yours looks like it's like a canvas. Like what I have behind me right here, yeah. so Abel Garcia, it's like you got something that's like real art put together. So like, what made you want to get started into doing all this? Like, you just want to start making graphics and, and stuff like that. What made you want to yeah, start bro. doing that? So honestly, like uh, coming out of high school, I really didn't pick up graphic design until I was like 22, you know? And like, I was just at mm. a really low point in my life. Uh, just like really... I mean, can we cuss on you? I don't want to, like, we can cuss, right? Like, well. Oh, uh, yeah, this is the, this nitty gritty. Right. All right, all right. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I really was just fucking my life up on some shit. And then uh, I hit 22 and I, like, started, I knew I liked art, 
you know, I really loved art always, but I don't know, I wanted to do something different. And so I found Adobe Creative Suite. And then um, after that, I locked in for like a year, just like on some like, just nobody, nothing. I just learned Photoshop after that, mm. got in school with that shit. Even in school, students was like, yo, that's hard. I like how you did that. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I got something with this. Decided to do freelance with mm. it. Uh, people started paying me for it. And then that's whenever my family was like, well, if they paying you for it, you know, you got something. So I was like, all right, cool. And if, yeah. since then, I've just been really going with it. I started out learning, like, traditional graphic design and, like, mm. I guess regular professional industry graphic design. And then from there, I met uh, a couple people. And, uh, yeah, I, I, met, I met Frankie and this dude really, like, showed me how streetwear is supposed to be like. And so I was mm. like, all right, cool tapped me in with a few people and since then it's just been up like yeah real, for real so I, I see that man you got a lot of different like types of styles man what i like about you is it's like a, it's a lot of color into it and when you yeah, say yeah i it's... really fuck with a lot of color you know like recently mm -hmm. just recently i started doing black and white like a little trick that i do is that like i'll design uh black and white first and then afterwards mm -hmm. i'll go and like add color and stuff like that but like if i can get black and white to be solid and the design is strong mm. then i know for a fact color is just going to intensify it by like a thousand so yeah and it's not even overpowered type color it's like it's like a well blended canvas like your All stuff right. and go check out his site right now if you guys are listening to it follow my boy trace graphics man um All right. bro, oh, like and I'm going to buy some merch at the end of this episode, by the way. I got to cop something. Mm -hmm. I know your stuff is custom, but I got to get something because your stuff is like, it's got a lot of that. that it's, I feel the the hip hop in it, the way the colors blend, the lining on it, you know, the shades on it. like, And it's yeah. just, it pops out, stands out. I feel like your, your, your style of merch, like you have, uh, you make pants too and hoodies and everything. Yeah, and there's a shirt yeah. you have. I think it's like a green shirt. And I swear to God, I was like, man, if I wore that shirt, somebody would notice me a mile away wearing that Exactly, thing. bro. I'm just like... Exactly. If you get a design from me and you wear that, and you wear something from me, you somebody see. is going to say, yeah. I like that shirt. Yeah. That's the, that's, that's the goal. Like, yeah. I mean, money and everything is cool, but like just having somebody knowing that like when you wear this shirt, somebody's going to notice it. And somebody's that's the gonna goal. Notice. Yeah. Every design, that's the goal. Yeah. For real. Man, that's what's up. So what what brands coming up like inspired you like what are your top influential brands man uh i got a lot of brands that like inspire me right now i can say for right now uh definitely activity another dallas you know brand they out in la and everything but uh, shout out activity shout out activity tommy you know what i'm saying uh Half evil, I fuck with half evil. They out of Chicago and shit. They doing their thing and shit so far. And nothing personal. Mm -hmm. Blasey, I just shout out Blasey. Okay, you know? shout out so, Blasey. Yeah, yeah man. As, yeah. as far as the Dallas like brands, so activity is what it's called, right? Activity, yeah. Yeah. Now I've never heard of them. I gotta check them out. But is it? Do you feel like the Dallas? swag or i mean do they even use swag what's the word now drip like where they they change it up but like yeah, every year like, it seems I like guess drip yeah drip so the dallas drip like i mean when i was coming up like i'm not from dallas i'm from wichita falls i moved down here in like 2009 and it's like i noticed it was always like the big t-shirts the uh the jays you know what i'm saying yeah. i don't really see too much like I don't know. It's just, you know, you see like the polos and all that stuff, but I don't really see like a lot of unique style of clothing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it seems like I, feel in you. Dallas, I feel like right mm -hmm. now in Dallas is really like a uh, top designer. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, top Shindy. designer, exactly. Yeah, and, like uh, I got my Gucci, my Louis type Gucci shit. You know and, what everything. I mean? and that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Like that is cool. There ain't nothing wrong with that shit. You got it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Boom. But a lot of niggas sometimes can't really like afford that shit. So, you know, yeah. I like to go for those people because it, and once you wear like a custom streetwear piece, it's like, you're going to wear that shit every day. Like and people love yeah. hoodies. You know what I'm saying? You make a fire hoodie, people wear that every day. I much rather have that. Now I'm not going to lie. I would love to design for like a Fendi or something at, at some point, you know, mm -hmm. but as of right now, I feel like, you know, that's really the, that's mm -hmm. what's hot to me. And in, in Dallas, yeah, it's, it's just mainly like top designer wear. Um, yeah. I don't know. I feel like sometimes they'll wear some 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 streetwear, but 
I don't know. Personally, I feel like some of that should be like like hype, like like hype beasts, like yeah. the brands, you know. <laughs> and I think most of the reason why, most of the reason why, bro, is because a lot of people out here aren't tapped in into the the industry like that, you know. Like, mm. I feel like maybe if a lot more uh, LA brands or like brands in Chicago or something maybe came out came out to Dallas, you know, maybe Dallas would get to see how like the culture is they'll see that line down the block who is this what is this a, a street yeah. brand? hold up you know what i'm saying right. they gonna peep it out once they see it but mm -hmm. it don't be in dallas like that so like they don't see it enough and they just don't know about it and i think that's what it is but eventually they yeah. will. all we'll right talk. so you brought up something about the top industry brands and people you know buying it because it's all hype so let's let's be totally honest and i'm gonna be totally honest with you right now yeah, just bathe right. in a shirt you probably can see it from a mile away, and you got eyes mm -hmm. of a genius mastermind merchandiser guy. Man, this I ain't real Bay the Nate. I got this from Amazon for twenty dollars. <laughs> I did not get this from Milo or whatever. But when oh, I wear it on public, people okay. be like, okay. And you can even tell if you look up close, you know, I'm on camera now, but you can just tell I watched this thing once and it's already kind of like, yeah. So, you know, do you really do you think, man? Are a lot of people out here just wearing fake shit? Because I, I be going out with every single one of my DJ gigs. I see tables of dudes, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. wearing Gucci. I see the shoes, the hats, the the, uh, the collar shirts. And I be like, song request be like $15. And y'all have an attitude about it. But you got Gucci, you Gucci down. I be like, right. mm, I be questioning. Are they, is yeah. people just really wearing uh -huh. fake shit around here or what? Yeah, man, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I can't yeah. answer that. I really don't know if it's fake or not, but yeah. I know sometimes niggas be wearing like really expensive clothes mm -hmm. and, and sometimes like somebody hit them with a price and they'd be like, oh no, <laughs> he'd be like all shooken up and shit. So, it's like they know. don't say that the whole month worth of uh, savings just for that one t-shirt and it's like. Yeah, <laughs> I never was, I never was like that. I never was like, uh, yeah. I've never been like a really big collector. I should, you know. People would think like, oh, you got all the brands and all this stuff. Like, I just started like collecting like the the, the streetwear brands and stuff like that. Really, I was just for a long time. I was just designing, you know. Like, I don't know. I feel like yeah. if you know how to dress, you know how to dress. You know, depending no matter. Yeah, what man, you that's got facts. On. You can make Walmart look like luxury, bro. You really, you know could. what I'm saying? Like, if you know how to dress, yeah. you know how to dress. <laughs> it's like, man, that's what I'm telling. Man, people just just. And that comes from the streets, man. From the streets, when, when you ain't had nothing coming up, you just make something pop. You make it work. You make, it work. you make it work. You make it work. You know what I mean? It's like, y'all just be trying, oh, I got the name brand, bro. You can make a new name brand. So speaking about creating a new name brand, you mentioned like you would love to design for bigger companies. Like if they gave you the opportunity, Louis Fendi yeah. came to you and was like, Trey, we want to put you on the board for a couple years, incorporate your vision. How would you take that? Like, let's say a Rihanna or, uh, you know, some kind of top brand reached out to you and was like, we want you in. We want to incorporate your ideas. How would you feel about them letting you in? Because you know what's going to happen. They're probably going to take your stuff and maybe change it around. Would you feel comfortable giving out, you know, your mastermind plans to other companies like that, just letting them run with it? Or do you feel like you have to take total control of it when you're in the seat? You know what I mean? Um, it just... It honestly kind of depends. Um, if I've been there for a long time, like if this is like my second year designer for Rihanna, I uh -huh. would expect to have a little bit more creative control. It's, if this is my first time, you know, yeah. I work with clients like all the time, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm never, that's the part, that's one thing about being a graphic designer. You can't, you can't want to have a hundred percent control, especially if someone is paying you, you know, if they're mm -hmm. paying you. I mean, there's only so much control you can have. I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they give you full creative control. Sweet, cool. All right, bet you're in the driver's seat. If you're not, don't bitch about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, adapt. And uh, they have a team for you. Okay, see, if, see, work your best with that team. Yeah. You should just, you know, you know what your skill set is. And you know, you know how good you are. And mm -hmm. if you feel like you could take a project like that on by all by yourself, cool. You know, yeah. I know personally, I love working with teammates, like mm. collaborating, co collaborative minds, especially on a design is so, so much harder than just like one mind, yeah. you know, because there's just so many different aspects, so many different things in the world going on right now that like another person could feel some type of way that you don't even feel, feel away. Yeah. And like, that's what it's all about. Like make a piece that can 
can last, you know, like it, somebody else sees that shirt and they're like, I felt that, yo, that's hard. You know, yeah. that's a, a conceptual piece. Conceptual pieces come from collaboration most mm. of the time, most of the time. Yeah, I agree with that, man. You know what I'm saying? That's that's definitely the truth. But um, uh, I don't man, know if that answered I, your question. <laughs> yo, you answered it, bro. You answered it, man. Oh, I also want to say this is the ones and twos podcast interview, whatever you want to call it. My name is DJ Cam. We got Trey Graphics in the motherfucking mix. Yours. If you guys have any questions, man, go ahead and ask the questions at the uh, question mark button down the bottom right. We do have the comments turned off so we can have full focus on both things. You know what I'm saying? Nitty gritty podcast. Ones and twos with DJ Cam. So, peso peso, man. If y'all don't know, peso peso, he's hot. I heard about him a lot when I was uh, like in Houston, when I heard about Sauce Walker, the Sauce Gang, everything like that. And I was like, this Mexican guy is cold. Like this dude wild. And I saw his throwbacks. Uh, I think he's from Houston, right? Uh, yeah, Texas City. It's like yeah. a little bit outside of Houston. Yeah, I Texas saw his City. throwbacks. This kid was freestyling like in high school or something. I was like, bro, this kid Yo, is like, really he reminds me of when kids back in the days is just hard. Yeah, yeah he, really he got, got bars. bars y'all yo. think he's, yeah, he can really rap. And you're doing graphics for him. You're doing design for him. So, like, tell us about that. What, what's it like working with, like, a hard-hitting artist like that? You know, being his his graphics guy, his go-to for, like, you know, his merch and all that. What's it like? Uh, Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's real cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even going to lie to you. It's quick pace. Because if you know, like, Sauce Walking, then they be on go. On go mm. 100%. So, like... Working with him, I definitely learned how to, like, get stuff done and get it done, like, you know, ASAP. You know, I mm-hmm. never – but prior to him, I had never had a client be like, hey, y'all, I need this, boom, 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 here go the bread, and I need it, like, now, like, type shit. Like, mm-hmm. all right, some designers will fold and be like, no, I can't do that right now. It's too much pressure. Like, you can't just do that to me. I never did yeah. that because I understood the opportunity, and I seen further than just, like, that one design. And yeah. every time I came correct, and, you know, before I knew it, you know what I'm saying? Just chilling with the gang and shit. It was cool. It was cool, you know? Good people. Yeah. They show you. They got a lot of work ethic, man. A lot of a lot of work ethic. I don't know about all the extra stuff that people may be having to say and all that extra shit, but mm-hmm. the work ethic is there 100% no matter what. For real. Yeah. They think everybody, I think people like that, they're so good at it. They work so hard and make, they make it look so easy. And on the yeah. outside, and they think, oh, y'all just having fun. It's like, nah, this work. It's networking, no, it's, it's business, it's, yeah, it's pushing out creativity. Work. 100% work, like, yeah, for real, it, for real. And, like, that's the thing. That's the thing a lot of people don't understand it, you know, is that, like, I take, like, this is my job, you know what I mean? Like, and mm-hmm. that, Peso, that's his job, you know, that's how he feeds his family. So, like, you got to yes. grind it, for real, for real. Like, how would you do, you know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's, it's the hustle, mm-hmm. it's the grind. And you know, real recognize yeah. real whenever that comes when it comes down to it. Facts, and you know, it's like I, I, I admire rappers like that because I started DJing, and it, it, you know, it, it was just fucking hard just to get a check over fifty dollars starting out. You know, what I'm saying, and over yeah. time, it's like okay, now I'm able to like make enough to make a, a decent living off of it. But it's like, honestly. When I see the DJing part now nowadays, that's the fun part. I mean, it's it's work, but the practice and the mix and the the, Bro, the uh, I fuck, master. I fuck with that. That shit is, you're like an alien to me. Like yeah. DJs and producers <laughs> and shit, they're like aliens yeah. to me. Y'all don't understand how they do that. Y'all like see <laughs> sound. It is so fire, bro. It's yeah, so fire. and it's just like y'all. It's like, bro, I can barely keep the uh the the fucking color in the lines, and you guys are just making shit like this without no template i'm like y'all aliens to me like how do you look at a blank thing and just draw it and yeah. it's all symmetrical i'm like what that's crazy but it's yeah. like i look at i look at the performance part as like fun you know what i'm saying the business part the networking the contracts all that that's like business the investing part that's you know that's the big risk part but it's like yeah. when i'm actually upstate on stage dj and i think that's like the fun part and then I go back and I start thinking of another business plan. But, um, yeah, that's why a lot of people that on the outside looking in, they're like, man, y'all just having fun. Y'all just got these cool things, these cool designs. No, nah, it took work. It took thought. It took effort. A lot of planning yeah. to get those designs yeah. out. You know what I'm saying? A lot of thought. A lot of yeah. Thought. 
it's like a lot of people just don't understand that. And, you know, that's why we're doing this. So y'all can hear from Trey's graphics firsthand that this is hard work. So, Oh yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. So speaking about, you know, the work on it, let's say for design, you you take requests for designs from anyone or do you just have like a strict clientele? Are you, are you open to everybody? Oh yeah. I'm open to the public. Yeah. I'm open. Okay. Yeah. I'm open to anybody. Um, Okay. Yeah, so, if, the, if the if the client, if I have a bigger client, like a big brand, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm working on a uh, on a big brand right now with Inflame, you know, shots out Inflame box, you know, uh, if it's something like that, you know, I'll I might take on an extra client, but like mm-hmm. maybe like one or two, because I want my main focus to be like on the yeah. brand, you know, because that's a major platform. Not to like say anything bad about these extra people, but it's just like, you know, they may be just starting their brand. You know, they may be doing their second drop. So sometimes it just, you know, fluctuates like that. Yeah, I feel that. So if somebody came to you and was like, yo, Trey, I love your shit. I want to get a custom. And, you know, you don't know this person from, you know, grain of salt. What's the whole process with that? Like the consulting process. Like, I want to work with you. I like your shirt. I want a shirt that looks kind of like this. How do you go about working with them? You kind of pause. But okay. So like you were, oh, let me say this. So somebody comes to you, they see something on your Instagram and they want to get a custom design from you. You don't know this person. They're like, yo, Trey, let me get a design. Like, what, what can I do? How, how do you work with them? Oh, uh, what's the process? Yeah. yeah. Like, what's uh, the process? So, so I tell them my, my, my price. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then after I tell them my price, if it's too much, I'm always down for negotiation, you know? Um, but there's only like so mm-hmm. low that I will. There's only so low that I can go before it just doesn't make any sense. So um, if everything's yeah. Gucci, if everything's Gucci, like if they want the, if they're cool with just that price, bet. All right. So now the next step, mm-hmm. I need I need all the reference pictures that you can possibly think of, so that way I get a mm-hmm. full clear vision of what your vision is. After that, uh, right. We you know we can Facetime, we can talk just like how we're doing right now. I don't mind that. Um, but after we talk, I still mm-hmm. need you to like type it out so that way I can go back and like actually read it as if it's a shopping list, you know? Um, yeah. after, and then after that, you know, I'll send it over. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm pretty lenient with like up, updated designs. Like if you want to update on the design and everything like that, pretty lenient with that. Mm. Um, some clients are just really picky and they have to get that, you know, plus 50 for the update or whatever, but yeah. Yeah. That's not bad. But that's pretty much the process. That's pretty much the process. Yeah. And then after that, I, I always, do you have? Oh, I always uh, after they get the design, I always offer mm-hmm. up mock-ups. So like, even if you don't even have merch yeah. yet, you know, I'll throw it on a couple t-shirts, nice mock-ups, just so you can see just for in the future, you know. That's what's up. That's good customer service right there. You know what I'm saying? Much mm-hmm. respect to that. Got throwing the cash flow for that because that's what it does. Good customer service is going to get you that cash flow, get you the connections. But do you ever have like some of those clientele, potential clientele, that it's just so much back and forth? Man, I want a green. Oh, it's not green. It's not green enough. Man, actually, I want it red. Man, man, flip it back. Like, do you ever have them clients that just, it's so much back and forth that it almost seems like a waste of time and you just feel like, I'm just about to block this number? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, I I ain't never gonna like just block you and just like run off on you. Uh, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, definitely there are clients that are picky. There are clients mm. that are picky, and sometimes the design just doesn't work. But yeah. what I do and what I've learned over time is that I don't ever delete the design. And if I do delete it, it's like a month or two afterwards. Okay. Maybe even then, I might still might not delete it. Uh, and I just tell them, you know, okay, hey, you know, this didn't work. Uh, if I refund you, then you get a refund of X amount of dollars and I keep this amount just for the work that I put into it, you know, mm-hmm. and you can go on about your day and I go on about my day. Yeah. Uh, or they'll just be like, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I'll just give you the refund for an X amount and then mm-hmm. I keep the rest for just the work ethic that I put into it. And then mm-hmm. most of the time they'll end up coming back because, yeah. It don't work on my, <laughs> out here in Dallas. I guess the graphic designers is not on my time. So they're gonna come back because they yeah. gonna go shop around, 
And I'm like, all right, bet. So now let's try this again. Let's, let's do it again, you know? <laughs> Yeah, man, I feel you, bro. It's like even in the DJ world, like as I've gotten more clientele, uh, it's like I feel I don't know. My my patience really is kind of thin when it comes to that. Like I have a base price, I throw it out straight up um, on my contract template. If they can't reach that number, you know, I am willing to negotiate, yeah. but I usually don't. Sometimes I have a team of DJs that maybe are you know, newer, younger guys that are there from college. And I may forward it off to them, but usually, man, person, I don't even like deal with it because it's yeah, like, that's cool. That's I don't cool know, that you brought like, that up. Yo, my price is like, yeah, that's cool that you brought that up because yeah, I wanted go to ahead. Mention, I wanted to mention this. Um, I actually have my own company. It's some graphic design services called Collective Graphics. Heck yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, it's that's gonna be it's gonna be fire, and uh, that's what I'm trying to build. You know, for those situations, yeah, same, same exact thing. Like, if there's a client that's just I. I can't do it. I pass it on over to this. Pass you know? it on to youngins. Or, you know? or if I'm, or if I'm like working with Inflame, you know, what I'm saying it's a big brand. I need my focus to be on that, but I still got yeah. clients coming in. I just throw it, you know, what I'm saying throw it their way, you know, it, and it goes yeah. hand in hand, you know. Uh, yeah. But the hardest thing about that is just trying to find people who have the same, not the same work ethic, but mm -hmm. up to par work ethic, you know. Yeah. And like, are willing to like, if I say, hey, yo, I need an update you know, by tonight or something. I'm not going to press yeah. you. I'm not some, like, dude to be like, I need this right tonight, like, bro, right micromanaging now. Micromanaging like, type shit. Yeah, I'm not going to do all that. But yeah. if I say, like, tonight, I'll give enough time to where I feel like it's reasonable for you to get to your laptop and, like, knock it out. Because I know I could do it. You know, I just need yeah. that extra hand. So, yeah, yeah. If, you, uh, if you a graphic designer out here in Dallas or the DFW Metroplex, definitely tap in. I need you to be having, like, two years of experience in graphic design, mm -hmm. and uh, I got the clientele for you. you know what I mean? Just okay. Tap in with me. So when you say experience, like, what are you looking for experience? Like, uh, they need to know how to use the computer stuff? Or they yeah, you need to know. You need to have two years of experience of uh, uh, Photoshop and Illustrator. Photoshop, okay. Uh, uh, not, not Maybe not Illustrator, but at least two years of, of Photoshop because you know when it comes down to mock-ups sometimes I might just need you to like just do mock-ups you know that's yeah. a real tedious job I'm just sitting here doing mock-ups I could be doing a whole nother design right uh, but yeah you need to have at least two years of that um, and then illustrator I really want an illustrator so like someone who can just draw mm -hmm. like almost like a tattoo artist you know I think tattoo artists would be like the best t-shirt designers, bro. Do you do tattoos also? Are you able to do nah, tattoos? No, nah, no, I don't. I don't. I feel you though too. Like I would feel that same way, but then it just goes into the artistry of it. Like some tattoo artists, yeah. uh, they may know how to use Photoshop, but like maybe they feel like they much rather just do tattoos instead of the shirts yeah. too. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't really yeah. know a tattoo game like that, but I do know most tattoo artists don't really have like t-shirt brands. They're really yeah, just like do tattoos. It's interesting because you walk into the tattoo shop and you see like examples of their work on yeah, pictures. They have it's like, put that like, on a t-shirt. Exactly. <laughs> you know what like, I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know. Even like in the industry, what, Ed Hardy? That was probably like the oh, most Oh man, I tattoo. used to have it. Yeah, like Ed Hardy was probably like the most tattoo styled brand. And he Loved it. That's just one. You know, yeah. I don't know. I don't get it. I used to fuck with Ed Hardy heavy back in the day, man. And I actually Hell had the, yeah. real, the I bought the real Ed Hardy too. And I was like, yo, and I felt older because I used to rock it a couple years ago, like right right before COVID kicked off. And I'll wear it out. People would think like, oh, this dude gotta be at least 40. I'm like, nah, bro, this is Ed Hardy, bro. I fuck it out. Nah, Hardy, yeah. <laughs> Ed Hardy so hard. I fuck with Ed Hardy. Yeah, so What's your, like, I mean, we're we going to keep a nitty-gritty on here. What's, like, the, the, a brand out there that you think, well, okay, we won't say specific brand. How can I say this? Let's just say this. What is something you think that other graphic designers, other creators should do to improve on their designs? Because, like I said earlier in the episode, I see so many people who claim that they're graphic designers like you, right? I see their work. And I'm like, this look like some uh, clip art, bro. Like this, no, you know what I mean? They're trying to sell me thirty, forty dollar t shirt. I'm like, nah. Like, I mean, no, no shade, no. But I'm keeping nitty gritty, bro. It's a t shirt, like not blank. Let's pretend this is blank purple t shirt, and it's yeah. a little like symbol. It's like literally this small right here. 
and they yeah, wanted forty dollars. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that ain't gonna cut it. That ain't gonna uh, cut it. Nah, bro. Yeah, what what, what nah. advice would you give to people like that who's coming in the game trying to make it happen? Um, honestly, try your best to make an experience with like your your piece. Mm -hmm. Shirt, pants, hoodie, jacket, whatever it is. Yeah. Try your best to first make an experience with it. Like, how can I make this like to where whenever the person buys it, mm -hmm. they're like, they have to show somebody, you know, how can I, how can I make that happen? And yeah. then once you get to the design part, uh, try and think conceptual, you mm -hmm. know, that's what I'm working on right now. Just trying to be more conceptual with my pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it it it's cool. Some designs can make no sense and just go so hard. You'd be like, what the fuck? Like, that's fire. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but trying to make more designs that make sense, like, uh, I can't think of something off, my head, off the top of my head, but just, like, a conceptual design, something that may have to do with, like, what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, because, like, graphic design is very, very powerful. Yeah. So, like, you could really start a movement off of one piece, yeah. And like, that's kind of how like Bape was doing. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they started a whole culture off of just like that logo and like mm -hmm. that print, you know? Yeah. But along with that logo and the print, it's very simple. Yeah. But like they created a whole experience, a whole culture. Like you got to think more deeply about your design mm -hmm. because I feel like people get real, um, I don't know, what's the word? People get real... Like real yeah. antsy, and they just want to rush it out real quick. Maybe, yeah, yeah, they'll get real antsy, and I don't think people really understand how powerful Photoshop and powerful like Illustrator can really be. Mm. And if you really think that way about it, like, why not try and change something? Try and change. You don't have to try and change the world, but like, yeah, try and change a, a thing that you saw within the industry. Mm -hmm. Something, you know? Yeah. And that, that most of the designers that I'm with, uh, that I be with. They, mm -hmm. that's that's all they're that's all they're about just conceptual yeah. designs designs that have a meaning behind it and make sense you know mm -hmm. i feel like it's, people yeah. go ahead oh go ahead um, so i was just gonna say it's it's totally cool if the design goes hard mm -hmm. you know uh and it doesn't really make sense if it goes hard fire but yeah try and make it to make sense yeah and i i, I would add on is be consistent to push out your message because i feel like yeah, people give up yeah. too soon they're like Oh, like I said, they try to be antsy with it. They come out with a design. They're like, it got to get 100 sales in a week. It's like, bro, you just started. Like, yeah. this shit probably won't pop. It could take a month. It could take five to 10 years for your shit to pop. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how long it took for Dapper Dan to pop, but he's an older dude, and he's like, I just now found out about him, like, you know, a few years. I mean, he's been in the game for a minute. Yeah, but yeah. just a guy like him and other designers, like, it's going to take time, so... Like just take your and time. Don't, and yeah, vision. and don't and don't be discouraged about that time, man. Like yeah. be on your own time. Like don't look yeah. at nobody and be like, oh, I, mm -hmm. I should be there at this point. Like, bro, I started graphic design at 22. Yeah. Like, bro, you didn't like what? Come on. And then on top of that, like, bro, like, yeah, just be on your just be on your own time. Oh yeah, I was gonna say like, don't be discouraged with that shit because like the longer it not saying that like, it's good to take longer, but like if it's taking a while. Mm -hmm. The people who are really fucking with you, mm -hmm. you're you're creating your brand like that way. Mm -hmm. Like you're branding people. Every time you do something, they like really fuck with it. They're like, oh, okay, bet you're doing it. All right, bet. I want, you know what I'm saying? I want that. Yeah. If it's taking a while, let that happen because you're building, you know, a community around you. Don't just let it take a while and sit there and be like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, let it take a little bit and network. Yeah. Let it take a little bit and network. Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying that's that's free game for you for real like just cooking it up you know what i'm saying let, up, let the, let the sauce marinate in the gumbo yeah yeah <laughs> network network and if you keep doing that i promise you the key is gonna fall like in your lap yeah because you were just doing so much movement so much networking so much talking to this person that person bro it's preach that bound, yeah it, preach it's that. Just bound to happen like it's gonna I, just land I can't tell you how many opportunities have fell in my lap for me just sitting on my ass because of people that I've, like you said, put an imprint on, branded back in yeah, college. Remember yeah. Kane from college? He was in my class. Just being a good person. Just for being real. an approachable person. Somebody to just pick up the phone like, hey, show me that DJ trick. Did you show me in college? Oh, I remember 
five years later, they get married and, you know, they're both making big banks. So you getting a shit ton of money off that wedding. And it's like, it's just shit like that, bro. And then it just propagates. Like their friends tell their friends and their friends and their friends. So off of one wedding, you can get like 20 weddings off of that. You know what I mean? It's like Mm -hmm. just being a good person and just, like you said again, branding yourself, just always saying, this is me, this is who I am, this is what I can do, and I'm going to do my best regardless, so let's work. Facts. You know what Facts. I'm saying? Okay, we're going to get into some questions. Let's see what we got here. Oh, we got some questions. What we got? What we got? What we got? We got a question for you. So Pablo says, shout out to the game. My question is, is going bigger on design better or focusing on the small details? I know he was like, yo, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, no, nah, it was a good question, Pablo. Um, is going bigger on the design better? Uh, situational question. Like, it just depends on the situation. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, uh, shit, being from Texas, going bigger is always better. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, if you're going to go big, pay attention to detail. Because yeah. if it's big, it's, it's large. It's a scale. A lot of people yeah. can see that. Pay attention to detail, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, let's see, do I, I have any? I think that's the only question we have for today. Let's see how do I close it out. Okay. Delete. Boom. Okay, so like, um, what do you do? You see, I have a question for you. So why does everybody? This is Texas, bro, and I noticed this kind of unnoticeably because I was like, I don't know, in college doing it. And I realized it when I saw everybody else doing it and people that weren't from Texas talking about this. They were like, y'all live in Texas. Hot. Why is everybody wearing hoodies out here in Texas and it's hot? I know. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. I'm just like, you know, they right. I'd be rocking the shorts and the hoodie when I'd be going to class, when I'm at the crib, and it'd be 98, 105 outside. Like, what, what is it about that? Well, shoot. One, <laughs> one I feel like one is like – you know, fashion is a must, low key, and so yeah. some some people just feel like they look cleaner in a hoodie. Uh, shoot, I I can't lie, I am one. I'm a product of one of those people. I be doing, yeah. <laughs> I be doing the same thing, and I'm in a hoodie right now in the crib. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I it's just so like weird. It's just, I feel like maybe it's just fashion and stuff. Oh, I could say this though. I got dreads. I know for a fact I'm gonna wear a hoodie if I got bad hair day. If I got a bad hair day. Uh-huh. That's why I'm wearing a hoodie. I don't really okay. wear hats. I look like a little kid when I wear a hat. You know? Okay. So. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, man. But, I, you... but I'm not going to wear a hoodie every single day in this heat. Yeah. I ain't going to do all that. It's yeah. just humid as fuck right now. So if you got a hoodie on, make sure your AC working too, everybody can tune in. Because I just stepped outside for lunch earlier today. Sweat. I damn near got cooked my damn self. Sweat. I was like, yeah, live. Yeah. I was like, we're going to skip lunch today. We're just going to stay inside. You know, we're just going to skip lunch. We're, gonna, we're just going to do dinner tonight. Wait till the sun go down and shit, and then we go outside. But, uh, yo, thanks for tuning in, Trade Graphics, man. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks man, thank again. you for having me, man. This is yeah. fire. This is cool. This is cool. Yeah, we're going to keep this up, man. I love to hear voices from, you know, I'm a DJ. I don't just like talking to DJs. DJs wear graphic. We wear merch. You know what I'm saying? We get designs for yeah, our flyers. Yeah, man. Any so let's DJs, talk to you. you know what I'm saying? Any DJs, yeah. I'm down for all that. I'm versatile. Like, I'm down yeah. to work with everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, we all just need to have a conversation because bartenders, graphic designers, DJs, producers, event hosts, we all in this game together, whether indirectly or, indi- or, directly or indirectly. So it's just how it is, yeah. man. So we having conversations. We got trade graphics here. DJ Kane live on the ones and twos. Peace yeah. out. Thanks for coming by, bro. Appreciate you, bro. All right. One, two.